I'm Sherry Driscoll. I am a pediatric physical medicine and rehabilitation physician at Mayo Clinic. I think historically we have looked at chronic pain as a sign or symptom of something being wrong. So uh, we've uh, been taught to exhaust every diagnostic option um, to look for the source of the chronic pain. Um, if we couldn't find the source of the chronic pain, it was almost as if we had failed. I think that the paradigm shift um, really has uh, made us understand that the pain can actually be uh, more of the diagnosis or the problem and there doesn't necessarily need to be any ongoing tissue damage, abnormality, disease um, at the bottom of it. But I think that we're now understanding that uh, there are situations where a person may have had an insult or an injury or an illness previously and what has come out of that is a situation where they just have ongoing pain. And in order to deal with that ongoing pain, we really use a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, in our pain, pediatric pain clinic, for example, we have specialists from pediatric anesthesiology and pain management, uh, pediatric psychology, and pediatric physical medicine and rehabilitation. And we work together to evaluate the child and actually the family system uh, more holistically to try to um, offer best treatment strategies. Pediatric pain um, occurs as with every pediatric illness and injury in the context of a, of a family unit. And we find that many times uh, the kids we see uh, have had a pretty significant chronic pain model in their family. So for example, a mom or dad may have had chronic pain themselves related to some other different etiology and child has just really been raised with um, a model that suggests that um, if a person has chronic pain, they are sick, they are disabled, uh, they're unable to work, they're unable to function, and so they follow suit. Uh, so uh, POTS, or post uh, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, is a syndrome that we see quite commonly at Mayo, uh, particularly in our pain clinics, because it's so often associated with pain, uh, chronic pain, and chronic disability in teenagers uh, in particular. Um, this POTS um, may result from a prior illness such as um, um, a sickness with mononucleosis or other infectious etiology or, or we just may never identify the particular trigger for this syndrome. But we see kids that are completely disabled uh, from their POTS. Um, as in adults, uh, children and teenagers um, with depression commonly have worse pain than those without. I don't think that that necessarily means that the depression causes the pain, but I do think that there is a strong connection between the two. And if we don't address the, distru uh, the distress or depression, um, we are really missing the boat and trying to um, put together a total package for child and family that will be helpful to them. So TENS is an interesting uh, modality um, to use for pain. Um, I think that there are, are quite a few, different, a few different opinions about whether or not uh, TENS are effective, and uh, the literature really is uh, not very robustly supportive, in fact, of TENS unit for chronic pain. But having said that, we've had a number of kids with focal areas of pain in which we have tried TENS unit, and it seems to be tremendously helpful. Um, there are probably a couple of different reasons for that. I think that we often offer TENS unit as part of a much bigger package. It's not the one and only sole thing that we use for pain, but it might be uh, used as a tool uh, for a child who has specific episodes of pain. It's nice because it's a modality that is uh, individually um, controlled, so a child can turn it on and off. They can turn it up and down, and so it's something over which they have some control, and I think in some ways it also um, gives them an out uh, in certain cases. And I think that in and of itself can be helpful. And at, at Mayo, we have a three-week adolescent and adult, for that matter, pain rehabilitation program that's also mostly specialty in nature. And that really, tar the target audience for that particular program are uh, kids or adults who have been identified as having chronic pain, who really have lost ability to function. So they're the kids that aren't going to school, they aren't participating in the, any of their activities, and we can't seem to get a handle on it by offering a different medication and some um, uh, you know, psychological therapy and physical therapy and that type of thing. It really is a bigger picture problem that needs a 
a whole frame shift for child and family. And in those cases, we'll refer them to our pain rehab program, um, who will really provide a tremendous amount of education to them and their families, and also get them on the road to starting to participate in activities such as physical therapy activities, occupational therapy activities, that sort of thing. So there are a, quite a number of um, different opinions and different medications used in chronic pain. And in our pain clinic, that's something that we discuss individually for each child. Some of the different medications that, that we use would uh, range from some of the older tricyclic antidepressants that can be used in chronic pain uh, situations. We tend to use those more if a child is having problems with sleep so that we can get uh, both uh, improvements in both areas there. We will sometimes use some of the anti-seizure medications such as gabapentin um, and Lyrica because they've been found to be helpful for chronic pain in certain situations. One of the things that helps most for these kids that are really in trouble with respect to pain and have been in a lot of pain for, a, for quite a long time is truly the holistic multi-specialty approach. It's, it's that collaborative relationship I think that that uh, and having us talk with each other that truly makes a difference for kids.